Hello, this is Peter back again after a very long delay. Apologies for that. But the reason for these delays or this delay is that I have about a year ago, I have started working on version four of Stage Tracks, which is a complete rewrite using all the knowledge uh, from, from all the years of uh, version three being in the field. And um, this version is will be quite a big update and um, I am on track in developing it. It's a lot of work, but I think I will be finished by end of the year. So stay tuned for that. But today is not about stage tracks. It's about a brand new app available today and that's called Stage Q. Stage Q is a video player for stage use and I have been asked a lot to incorporate video functionality into stage tracks, but I don't think that video playback and audio playback need the same user interface. So in my opinion, you want to have quick direct access to videos when you use video clips on stage. Uh, you would want to switch themes on the um, tap of your fingertips and um, you are not interested in seeing lyrics or things like that. So my idea was to build the video playback functionality into its own app and this is stage U available today. So let me give you a short demonstration of what it does. Here on the screen you can see the, the basic user interface when you start it up first. Uh, we have two areas on the screen, a top area which uh, contains a video preview, a settings button, and uh, this icon can, can be used to reorder everything that's down here. Down here is the clips view. Here you can add video clips and rearrange them, uh, configure them and uh, start stop playback. And um, the way to do, is, to do it is to push the big plus button and then you can import clips either from directly from files or from your photo library. Um, I choose from files and I have some sample files. I can select multiple files and it will import all of them. And these are now available for playback and I can play them back just by clicking on them. And this is the preview. The preview is shown on the screen, in this case on my MacBook, um, on the iPad it's the same. Um, you can always see what is displayed on the external screen if you connect one via AirPlay or um, HDMI. And here on the Mac you can create new video windows, um, for example by selecting the file menu and selecting new video display or tapping uh, command N. Uh, to open it and this will open up a new window. This window you can place anywhere on the screen or on external displays as you like. You can make it full screen on the external screen or uh, arrange it in any way you need to incorporate your playback. And whatever you see here on the preview is also displayed here on the external screen. So basically this is the gist of it. But there is, of course, there is more to it. So, um, if you hold the button, either with your mouse or with your finger touch, the video settings will open. And here in the video settings, you can configure the button itself. For example, um, we can change the title, Wobble uh, FX, for example. We can set a color. Let's say I want it the screen. Uh, we can change the play mode. Loop means when the video finishes, it will restart from the beginning. And um, if your loop, video loop is seamless, the playback will be seamless. You can't see um, the loop jumping or something like that. Stop means um, when the video finishes, playback will finish. And play next means it will continue with the next one. And using these three modes, you have quite a lot of possibilities to arrange your playback. Um, mute audio um, is by default on. You can use it to play audio. For example, if you're uh, a screencaster, uh, you might want to play the audio with uh, the video with the audio. For stage use, you typically don't need the audio, therefore it's muted by default. 
these are informations about the video file. And now the interesting part, you can use keyboard shortcuts to trigger playback. For example, um, if I tap on it, it will wait for a key press. I can press the one button and now the one is mapped to starting and stopping this video. You can do the same with MIDI triggers. Um, if you have a MIDI keyboard or a MIDI controller connected, um, it's just the same. You tap on it, it will start listening for MIDI events. You press the button or whatever command you want to use on your controller and then that can be used to trigger um, video playback. So um, let's continue with setting this up. Um, my, my first video is uh, one. Let's say I want to change uh, the order of these two. Um, I enable the rearrange mode and then I can uh, Oops, I can uh, drag and drop the videos uh, in the position I need. Simple as, as that. Um, let's edit the second one. This should be red. And I want here the play mode next so that it will continue with the next one when it finishes. And the tunnel is fine. Um, that's basically it. Now, when no video is playing, Let's open the preview uh, window, make it a little bit smaller, place it here in the background. You see that uh, the display is black. Um, when you're, for example, a band or um, a performer on stage, uh, usually uh, I think you would like to uh, show your band logo whenever nothing uh, actively is playing. So there's the possibility here in the settings to use a pause image, which will always be displayed when nothing is playing. And uh, here again, you can import it from files or from your photo library. Let's import it from the files. Here's the sample image. So now it is playing. Again, whatever you see on the screen of your device you're using to control playback is also displayed here. And um, that's basically it. You can start playback at the point of your fingertips. Um, you can stop it, you can rearrange it, and it's really easy to do. It will also um, listen to your key presses. So we have uh, assigned verbal here the key one, stars will be key two, and tunnel will be set to key three. So now if I press the keys, it will just switch to the videos. Pressing the same video that is playing another time will stop it. Of course, this automation, especially with MIDI commands, um, does work really well together with stage tracks, for example. So you can define MIDI commands or learn MIDI commands here that you send with stage tracks um, to stage queue. Um, this does also work via, um, via network MIDI, um, especially if you are using um, uh, iPad for uh, stage queue. Um, with the iPads, they can connect directly to another device running stage tracks. Uh, on uh, the Mac, you need the utility, uh, you need to use uh, the audio um, MIDI setup utility. And here in the MIDI studio, you can use Open MIDI Network Setup. And uh, let me start quickly stage tracks on my iPad. So stage tracks is running. As soon as stage tracks is running on my iPad, um, I can see it here. I can select it, connect to it. And once connected, all MIDI commands from stage tracks will be received here in stage queue. And that means that you can um, set up your songs and uh, automate your video playback. You, you can have um, a video playing during the verse and another one playing during the chorus, just like you need it, which makes it very, very flexible. So this is basically everything there is to it. It's a small utility, but very, very handy. You, you can use AirPlay, for example, to uh, stream your videos um, to, to screens. If you have an Apple TV, for example, connected to it, 
Um, you can use uh, Lightning or USB-C to HDMI converter um, uh, to, to connect external screens. Um, if you are using a Mac, it is possible uh, to open as many video displays as you need. So you could use three external screens, for example, um, all playing in sync um, with whatever you select on the main device. Um, I think this will be really, really handy and um, as I said, it's available today. The price is $9.99, might vary from country to country a little bit. Um, let me know what you think about this, this and um, see you soon once uh, the next update uh, is live with some new amazing features. I already have something in the pipeline. so. Thanks guys, see you soon, bye bye.